In December 2019, China notified the World Health Organization of several cases of human respiratory illness, a disease later named COVID-19. The virus causing this disease is known as Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2. The disease spreads through small droplets that are expelled from the nose or mouth when a person with COVID-19 coughs or exhales. Therefore, standing close to someone who is infected can put you at risk. These droplets can land on your hand and be transmitted through something as simple as a handshake if afterwards you touch your eyes, nose or mouth, the so-called T-zone. The virus is known to survive on different types of surfaces, so touching these contaminated surfaces and then touching your T-zone brings a high risk of infection. What we know so far. The coronavirus is spherical in shape and its genetic material is encapsulated by different types of proteins. Some of the key structural ones are spike S protein, the most prominent feature of coronaviruses from where they get their name, then M, or membrane protein, and the so-called envelope protein. Assalamu alaikum, welcome to my class. I am Nazmul Shrit, lecturer in physics under the Department of Physics in Boishal Cat College due to corona pandemic, you will stay home. That's why we take our as usual class in online and uh, I believe that very soon we will meet again. Again today we discuss chapter number nine that is the uh, heat and temperature. And uh, this is the second class and uh, today's learning outcomes are Number one, analyze the effect of change of temperature over pressure and humidity of air. Number two, explain the process of heat transpirations, that is transportation. Number three, explain the thermal expansion of substance. Number four, the transfer of heat, which causes different incident all around and uh, five distinguish between radiation and uh, observations firstly we discuss the effect of change of temperature over pressure and uh, of humidity of air this is a natural phenomena uh, when uh, when we take uh, a on kind of fixed substance, their molecules must be fixed and uh, they are uh, combined or uh, contained in a pot. And uh, when we increase the temperature, uh, then the kinetic energy of the molecule will be increased and uh, it uh, give that means the particle give the pressure on the all of the pot and that's why its pressure also be increased. So uh, in a confined pot or a confined uh, container uh, where the volume is fixed, uh, the, if you increase the temperature of that uh, pot or container, then inside the container, the molecules kinetic energy will be increased and the pressure will be increased. But uh, uh, if we see uh, in the sense of uh, atmosphere, uh, there, there is not a, a continuous or constant volumes. It's a open volumes. So if you uh, increase the temperature of the molecules of the atmosphere, it uh, kinetic energy will be increased. That's why uh, these molecules uh, cannot stay that place. It uh, goes past the upper sides and uh, then uh, it's maybe go uh, the uh, other sides while you uh, increase the temperature. So uh, the molecules uh, uh, of that place will decrease in the sense of atmosphere. So the atmosphere is open. That's why 
if you increase the temperature of the atmosphere the molecules of that atmosphere are scattered everywhere that's why uh, at that time the that place the decreases the number of molecules so pressure not be increases in that place pressure will be decreases boys you must be uh, take it a considerations uh, if you take a pot of uh, some gases and uh, you fixed it and uh, then you increase the temperature then the kinetic energy will be increased and the the molecule uh, inside the pot uh, will not be scattered it all has to stay on uh, inside the pot and uh, it gives pressure uh, inside the surface of the pot and uh, that's why the pressure will be increased but if uh, your pot is now open and give you heat then the molecule comes out of the pots and scatters everywhere that's why the pressure never be increased so that's why the pressure will be decreased so uh, for open ended for open place if you increase the temperature the pressure will be decreased but it's a constant places that is a closed place if you increase the temperature then the pressure also be increased now humidity humidity uh, is the amount of water vapor or moisture in the air if at any where amount of water vapor or moisture is increased that means humidity will be increased the change it must be changed with temperature because uh, you know boys uh, when you, you increase the temperature then the uh, upper surface of the water will be vaporized and uh, it goes to the atmosphere that's why uh, it's uh, increasing in the uh, atmosphere that's why humidity will be increased okay another question warm air holds more moisture than cold air because warm air that means uh, when the temperature is increasing the air must be warm and that's why uh, the humidity of the atmosphere will be increased so it is a proportionality relations between humidity and temperature in the atmosphere if you increase the temperature of the atmosphere then the uh, water vapor must be increased in the atmosphere that's why humidity will be increased here there are uh, three consideration in the second pictures uh, here uh, the surface or container as likes volumes but our water vapor is uh, as uh, like of amount contained in this uh, amount so uh, that is a uh, relative humidity is less uh, here uh, 50% relative humidity that means uh, you see here uh, this water vapor contain 50% uh, of the whole area that's why our relative humidity is 50% uh, and here a uh, whole area is covered by the uh, water vapor that's why we can state 100% relative humidity so uh, if uh, the water vapor contain whole of the area then 100% this 50% is covered by the water vapor then it is 50% relative humidity if a 10% covered of the whole area then it is 10% relative humidity it's very easy to understand now we discuss how there are three ways to heat that transfer from one place to another place here uh, this is the uh, first is uh, uh, conduction then uh, convection and the uh, last one is radiation we know there are three process of heat transfer from one place to other place that is the uh, conduction convection and uh, radiation firstly conduction in solid substance in this way heat transfer from one place to another way place that's called conduction process and uh, convection process in liquid that's uh, fluid uh, where where the molecule can transfer from one place to another place uh, in process so heat transfer from one place then it's called is conduction there's convection process and uh, without help of any kinds of medium when heat 
transfer from one place to another place that's called radiation process so for the transmitting of particles we can define conduction no particle moves from one place to another place it only vibrates standing in one place and uh, uh, for vibrating heat transfer energy one place to another place uh, as like uh, molecule to molecule molecule to molecule transformation process and convection process as like when the molecule transfer or uh, change its position from one place to another place as like uh, we know that in fluid uh, the molecule can easily transfer or uh, change his position on place to another place but in uh, solid substance it's very difficult to uh, molecule transfer his one place to another place uh, change his position so in solid substance heat can be transfer on place to another place that is called conduction in liquid or fluid substance uh, where the uh, solid uh, liquid heat can transfer that should be called convection process and uh, when the sunlight is come uh, from the outer atmosphere of the earth it comes without help of any medium that should be called radiation process so this is a another uh, animation picture so for example of uh, radiation conduction and convection about he you see here a man it's a rod uh, that goes inside of the fire and uh, the rod is heated and uh, its uh, color will be changed uh, and it uh, becomes uh, red then uh, the heat is coming from as like process and uh, convection uh, when this uh, uh, fire warm the air uh, that is uh, the air which is present very nearly to the fire that's a warm and goes uh, outside and uh, comes to uh, our hands it is a convection and another way uh, the process where the uh, heat energy cannot need any medium and comes to the hand it is called radiation in this place uh, heat not on, not also uh, goes to convection process it also be radiation process so upper side in upper side uh, there are two types of radiation comes to our hands one is convection another is radiation but uh, side by side heat must be come as a process of radiation so this animation is not fulfill give constant uh, sense to uh, heat transformation uh, this is uh, must be uh, heat uh, conduction process Uh, but an upper side not on look not on so convection it also be radiations and uh, by side it must be radiation because uh, when the uh, molecules uh, who are present near by the fire are heated and gain heat it not comes back to as like ways but there is a side by side it all of them goes to the upper side Uh, this is the process of uh, conduction of heat transfer when uh, we give heat uh, to the substance the molecule are vibrated but not change his own position and it uh, transfer heat by the near of the molecules and near by the molecules and the it goes from one place to another place and uh, here i give two examples of uh, heat transformation on its radiation you see here and uh, this is a practical use uh, we feel goes uh, this is the conduction process when the heat comes to a solid substance and convection process this is a uh, ohm here goes to the outside here also be conduction process convection process and radiation process for many of the information i am sure that you must be clear about uh, the transformation of heat from one place to another place and uh, this is also another uh, example uh, here the fire is uh, firing and uh, the uh, cool air is coming uh, from the window and comes here and uh, when this cool window uh, close contact with fire then it is uh, uh, heated then uh, it goes to convection process of the hot air and go up, up side 
and uh, where the fire is uh, uh, hitting, uh, there's a solid substance, and there uh, must be heat uh, transfer from a conduction process and uh, some uh, radiation energy that is radiation heat uh, side by side. So this is the another example for giving the complete sense of heat transformations. Now we discuss uh, uh, thermal expansion of substance. Uh, uh, this is uh, as like uh, the vibration process. This is uh, a, on kind of solid vibrations when it is cold, but uh, when we give some extra temperature on this substance, uh, the vibrations of the molecules is uh, faster before uh, and uh, it needs some more places for moving uh, or uh, show these types of characters. So uh, you see here, if we take the shape or volume or area of this substance, uh, it can be covered as likes area. But when we give the temperature, ooh, the area of that molecules or volume of the molecules also be increased. So when we give temperature in a normal substance, that is a normal temperature substance, uh, uh, the kinetic energy of the molecules also be increased and uh, its uh, size also be increased due to the uh, kinetic energy of the molecules. Here, yeah. uh, this is the another example. Same amounts of molecule presence here, this uh, substance, and uh, same amounts of molecules is present here, but the size of the substance is too increased before these materials. Why? What is the reason? Uh, if uh, you give uh, or provide heat, this substance, this the kinetic energy of the molecules is increased, then the size or volume of the substance also be increased. And uh, this is a, another example for linear expansion of solid. Uh, what is the linear expansion? Uh, we know that uh, every kinds of materials have uh, uh, length, breadth, and height but when the length is too high compared to breadth and height then we consider these materials only have linear uh, that is length as like wire uh, we we take examples wire only uh, has length why it is because the breadth and height of the wire is too much negligible to its length so we can consider the wire only has length. So when you give heat in a uh, rod, then the rod must be increased. That's why uh, uh, the length of the increase or kinetic energy of the molecule also be increased. And that's why uh, the length of the rod also be increased. In your books, there are a lot of experiments. Uh, one of is, uh, uh, ball and ring experiments. In ball, the outside of the radius of the uh, ball and the inside radius of the ring is same. That's why ball uh, comes easily or uh, goes easily inside or outside of the ring. Uh, but if you give heat to the balls, then the uh, outer radius or the volume of the balls will be increased. That's why the ball cannot go uh, inside of the ring. So there is a, another example for uh, thermal expansion of the substance. And uh, this is a, another uh, expanded, that is a, if you check back uh, the temperature of a substance, uh, if it's a cold substance, a normal temperature substance, then uh, uh, there is a, some warm substance uh, compared to this uh, temperature and uh, there's a hot te temperature substance uh, that compared to between this. Then you check back the temperature of three substance, uh, there is temperature must be low, then it is high, then it's more high than compared to this. So from this, uh, you must be uh, gain more idea about uh, thermal expansion of substance and uh, uh, best examples for uh, thermal expansion of uh, uh, substance. Uh, that's why uh, to the gaps between uh, two rail lines uh, uh, must be present uh, in the railway 
because uh, in summer session is uh, summer session we know that the temperature more and more then uh, the increasing the length of the rod uh, and uh, when two length of the rod is uh, too much uh, increases then the well line must be zigzag that's why uh, the accident must be occurred that's why the gaps between two rail lines must be happened uh, if the rail line will be increased then the cup uh, cover up uh, this uh, gaps that's why the rail lines never be zigzag now i say something about uh, coronavirus you must be stay at your home don't touch your face and nose without washing your hands that's why you wash your hands frequently and must be extend uh, 20 seconds and uh, all as them avoid uh, contact with flu like kind of person and uh, there is the uh, transfer of heat which causes different incident all around one is a micro oven where uh, this is the heat radiation and convection process that mainly Uh, uses this radiation process, and here uh, this is a heat uh, radiation or convection process. Uh, there uh, must be a current generating. That's why the current must be generated in a way. And uh, this is a glass room uh, where uh, inside the glass uh, there is a uh, heat must be uh, comes as a radiation process. That's why the room uh, is warm, feel warm. So this is the. practical examples for uh, heat uh, uh, heat transformation process so that's why that's why we use the heats in different perspectives this is the best example uh, for where we use heats and this is the distinguish between radiation and radiator or absorber uh, you will see the pictures uh, there are three bands uh, one man is firing some Woods and other men to uh, go out uh, far away from the fire because they uh, they uh, gain some uh, heat from this fire. So uh, this is the radiation process. Uh, in uh, in that process, the men uh, take some uh, heat or temperature from this fire, and uh, uh, this is the he is the absorber uh, and uh, radiator. That means uh, who Radiated or this the uh, fire uh, energy and uh, absorber that means who absorb the energy. This is the basic difference from radiator and uh, absorber. So some knowledge based questions in this uh, regards. Uh, what is the effect of temperature on humidity? What happens uh, when air pressure decreases? What are the three process of heat transfer? That is trans. Uh, uh, what cause uh, thermal expansions? and some combustion based question how does the air pressure change with temperature why is temperature and pressure directly proportional uh, how can heat be transferred how does the heat radiation work how is thermal expansion used in everyday life some mcq question uh, number 1 what is the reading of boiling point of water uh, you know that uh, what is the temperature what is the example of heat conductor and what is the heat how many division of fahrenheit scales you know and uh, what is used uh, meteorological to me measure the temperature of your yard and uh, this is a homework that you practice in home x by 5 is equal to x minus 32 by 9 number a question what is freezing point why temperature varies of different shape of bodies Number C, explain the relation between Celsius and Fahrenheit scale. Number D, is it possible to calculate the temperature of Celsius and Fahrenheit scale? Verify your answers. And uh, now the question answer session. If you have any question or query, I discuss in the second session. That means uh, in the dashboard, you give your questions, and I must be reply it. And uh, lastly, I give some. Uh, video clips uh, for more about gain to your uh, information about heat transformation or heat generating process uh, i believe that if you watch this video you must be more clear about these topics and with this hope i nazma shuit conclude of today's lecture thank you thank you all
Have you ever touched a hot pan and burned yourself? How about warmed yourself in front of a nice campfire on a cold night? Ever notice that most of the time air vents in houses in the north are on the floor, while in the south they're on the ceiling? These are all related to the movement of heat and how it gets transferred between substances and locations. Heat can move between objects or spaces, and there are three main ways it does this. Conduction, convection, and radiation. Let's look at how each one works. If someone pours you a hot cup of coffee, you're likely going to pick it up from the handle instead of around the main part of the mug. This is because the coffee mug will conduct heat from the hot liquid inside to your hand. This direct transfer of heat from one object to another is called conduction. The coffee mug transfers heat well, as do many other substances, including metal. You certainly wouldn't touch a hot metal pan on the stove or hold a nail over a flame without some sort of protective glove because you know that the heat from the metal will quickly transfer to your hand and burn you. It makes sense then that these substances that conduct heat well are called conductors. Some substances are very bad at transferring heat, and these are called insulators. Wood is a very good insulator, therefore a very poor conductor, which is why your metal pot on the stove may have a wooden handle. You can do a little experiment to see this in action. If you have an area in your house where wood floor meets some tile, put a bare foot on each one. You'll find that the tile floor feels cooler, but both floors are actually the same temperature. The tile is a much better conductor of heat than the wood, so it transfers the heat from the bottom of your feet better than the wood does, making your foot feel cold. Air is also a very poor conductor, which is why you can reach your hand inside an oven to grab a dish without burning yourself, unless you forget your oven mitts and grab the dish itself. Your house is insulated with something like rock wool or fiberglass because these substances are poor conductors of heat. Imagine how cold your house would be if there was no protection from the cold outside during winter, or how hot it would be if you weren't protected from the heat outside in the summer. Interestingly though, insulators don't actually stop the flow of heat, just slow the transfer considerably. That's why you still need to run your heat in the winter and AC in the summer, just not as much as if you had no insulation at all. Remember how I said houses in the north commonly have their air vents on the floor while houses in the south have theirs on the ceiling? This is due to the way that heat flows in fluids and both gases like air and liquids like water are considered fluids because of the way they move. When heat is transferred by currents in a fluid, this is called convection. Convection happens in all fluids like the air in your home, water in a lake, and magma underground, just to name a few. Here's how it works. Imagine a room full of children who have just had a bunch of cookies. They become quite energetic and start running around the room. If you open the door and let them outside, they burst out and start running around the larger space, spreading out in the yard. And the same thing happens when a fluid is heated. The molecules at the bottom gain energy and begin to move faster. As they move faster, they begin to spread apart, which makes the fluid less dense. But instead of being confined to a yard, the fluid's warmer molecules begin to move upward while the cooler, denser fluid begins to sink, just like the children start settling down as their cookie rush subsides. Once the cooler molecules reach the bottom where the heat is, it's like they ate another cookie and get an increase in energy again. They rise back up to the top while the cooler molecules sink back down to the bottom. The cycle continues as long as there is a heat source at the bottom. What does this have to do with air vents in a house? Well, if you live in a cold climate, you probably use your heat more often than your AC. And if you live in a warmer climate, you probably use your AC more than your heat. So if hot air rises and you use your heat more often, you'll want your vents on the floor so that hot air travels upward to fill the room as it comes out of the vents. The opposite is true for air conditioning. If cool air sinks, you wouldn't want it to start out on the floor because it wouldn't cool the room as effectively as if it starts from the ceiling where it can cool the room as it falls. When you sit in front of a campfire, you're warmed by its heat. Hover your hand over a hot light bulb and you'll feel the heat coming off it, even without touching it. Stand out in the sunshine and you'll quickly get warmed by its rays. 
These examples illustrate our final mechanism of heat transfer, radiation. Radiation is when heat is transferred by electromagnetic waves like radio waves, infrared waves, x-rays, and even visible light. All objects both emit and absorb radiant energy, even you. Though like everything else, some objects and substances are much better at this than others. Those that are good at emitting radiant energy, like the sun, are also very good at absorbing it. A radio antenna is designed to be a good absorber of radio waves, but that also means it's very good at emitting them. When it comes to radiant heat, much of what is produced on Earth comes from the Earth itself. It absorbs radiant energy from the sun and then emits it back towards space. This radiant energy emitted by the Earth is called terrestrial radiation, and it is what makes life possible. Like a big blanket, gases in the atmosphere trap terrestrial radiation on Earth and keep our planet nice and warm. What's really interesting is that unlike conduction and convection, radiation happens even when there is no material for the heat to travel through. The sun's rays travel through space to Earth, but since space is by definition empty, there's no point of contact, like conduction, or fluid, like convection, for the heat to travel through. The waves simply move heat through space just by, well, moving. Heat is very friendly. It likes to move, transfer, and travel. It does this by three main mechanisms, conduction, convection, and radiation. Conduction is the transfer of heat through direct contact between different objects or substances. Touching a hot pan on the stove, walking on hot sand along the beach, and putting a metal poker into the fire are all examples of conduction because heat is transferred from one object to the other as they touch. Some substances are better at transferring heat than others, and to make it easy, these are called conductors. Substances that do a poor job of transferring heat are called insulators. Metals are good conductors, but things like wood and air are poor conductors. If you put your hand in the oven, it doesn't burn, but grab the dish that's been heating in there, and I bet you'll wish you had your oven mitts on. And remember, you still have to use your heat in the winter and air conditioning in the summer because insulators don't stop the transfer of heat, they just slow it down considerably. When heat is transferred through the movement of fluids, this is called convection. Convection currents are like the result of giving children cookies. The molecules at the bottom have more energy and are warmer, so they move to the top of the fluid. Meanwhile, the molecules at the top are cooler, they're coming down from their sugar rush, and sink back to the bottom where the cycle starts all over again. Both gases and liquids are considered fluids, so you'll find convection currents in air as well as water. When heat is transferred by electromagnetic waves, this is called radiation. These waves come in all forms, x-rays, ultraviolet, radio waves, and even visible light. Like heat radiates from a fire or a radiator in a house sends heat out into a room, radiation is the movement of heat from one place to another simply by traveling along with the waves. All objects both absorb and emit radiation, though some are better than others. The Earth is very good at both absorbing and emitting the sun's radiant energy, and when it sends it back into space, this is known as terrestrial radiation. Terrestrial radiation is what makes life possible on Earth. This is because as heat is radiated back towards space, it gets trapped by the gases in the atmosphere, making Earth a nice, warm place to live. Solids expand on heating and contract on cooling. Take an iron ball and a ring apparatus. At room temperature, the ball just passes through the ring as shown here. Heat the iron ball.
Now try to pass the ball through the ring. The ball does not pass through the ring. Why is this so? When the ball is heated, it expands and its size increases. After some time, when the ball cools, it contracts and will again pass through the ring. This activity shows that solids expand on heating and contract on cooling. Take a metal bar and a gauge as shown here. Try to fit the metal bar into the gauge. The bar exactly fits into the gauge. Take the bar out and heat it for some time. Now try to fit it into the gauge. You will see that it does not fit at all now. The reason is that the bar has expanded due to heating. Let the bar cool for a while. As soon as it comes to its original temperature, it again fits into the cage. This activity shows that solids expand on heating and contract on cooling.